Good afternoon, it's Carla Cosmic Crone, and I'm here for the Divine Feminine Astrology reading. And um, it's for the Gemini full moon, which is at 4.30 a.m. on Monday morning, November 30th. And it happens to be a penumbral eclipse. And that means the moon will be passing through an edge of the Earth's shadow. However, even, even though it, we may not even be visibly able to see the subtle change in the moon's color as it passes through the shadow, this eclipse is still powerful and it is still a, um, an extra super powerful portal. So I'm, I'm going to make this quick because um, we have guests coming in an hour. I cooked my turkey today and it's got to come out of the oven. But I wanted to give you plenty of time to anticipate this full moon from the Divine Feminine perspective. The sun is in Sagittarius, early Sagittarius, which is a super high-powered spiritual sign. It is really the gateway to the cosmos, Sagittarius is. Um, and the moon is across the sky in Gemini, which is the sign of the twins. It is the sign that is um, uh, wow, it will be setting, very close to setting, at least in the, um, at the moment of the full moon. In, the, in my sky. Um, so when I'm looking at new moons and full moons, I look at what they are in direct aspect to, and I also look at what else is going on. Who are the characters that are showing up to play in the portal? And the sun and the moon are in a, a formation called a T-square to Nessus. It's like they are focusing their energy on the planet Nessus in Pisces. Nessus is a planet that speaks of, about ancestral healing and the healing of trauma that comes through from past lives um, or from past generations. So this eclipse is yet another opportunity to do some deep personal work around the trauma that you may have been carrying through your lineage. Um, and I think the other things that are going on in the chart support this. It supports this work in a way that is a resource and it also supports uh, it supports awareness. It supports knowing, uh, knowing where the energy is that you can use to do the work. So there's, there are a lot of aspects in this part of the chart, but I'm gonna look at a couple of them that I think are incredibly potent. The first one is rising. Venus is rising. Venus in Scorpio is literally at my house lifting over the horizon. I probably won't even be able to see her yet. Um, we are expecting clear weather Monday morning and Venus has been waking me up, whether it's cloudy or clear. She tends to wake me up. Uh, so anytime between four and 4.30, uh, she's saying, wake up Carla and uh, there's been many mornings where I've been standing at my window watching her uh, appear over the hills and through the trees, and it's exquisite. So she will be rising and the moon will be setting. Uh, well worth getting up to see if you can at 4.30 in the morning. And I have something more to say about Venus, but I'm gonna close with that. Um, so let's look at what else is happening. Sedna is a planet about ancestral healing. She is about a, a woman who had a seriously dysfunctional relationship with her father. 
to the point that because she disobeyed him and displeased him, he was willing to sacrifice her, to murder her in order to save his own life. And through this fearsome tragedy, she became the creation goddess of the Inuit people, creating her severed fingers, created all of the animals that the hunters would hunt and feed the people. And the hunters would send the shaman down into the depths of the ocean to appease Sedna and to curry her favor so that they would have a safe and successful hunt. And she is with the dark goddess, the demonized goddess, Algol, over in Taurus. And they are together, especially Sedna, opposite Mercury. And this is what that tells me is that it's a good time for communication with the ancestors with to work with the dark goddess the demonized goddess inside of you to work with that dark hour of the morning before the sun rises what is the mamas and papas song the darkest hour is just before dawn so the moon is setting and it's over in the same area of the sky of Algol and Sedna. You won't be able to see Sedna, but you could see Algol. She's a star in the constellation Perseus. And so she will be setting as Venus and other stars, Spica and um, Mercury, are rising. And you can stand between these two, between the moon and Venus and the sun that has not yet risen yet, and communicate with your ancestors. Communicate with the traumas. If you are due for a cord cutting ritual, it's a good time to do that. Very simple. You can just say, take back everything that is yours and I, I will retain the love, I will retain the gift, I will retain the power, but take back what is yours? And I, as a human being here in this lifetime, will do the healing work for all the generations. This is how it works, folks. And so you've got that square to Nessus, the moon and the sun, and then very near to them, you have the opposition of Mercury, Sedna, and Algol. And they are connected to, um, to this massive triple, con or actually it's a quadruple conjunction in late Capricorn. You've got Saturn, Jupiter, and Pallas Athene getting ready to ease over into this uh, great conjunction that's ha happening at... Uh, at the solstice and at the same time Pluto is having a square to Eris which is death and transformation triggering discord and chaos whenever we step in and claim our power especially as women the world <laughs> Well, the patriarchy trembles. The foundations of the patriarchy tremble. And this moon is calling upon us to claim that power, to do some big work inside. And be not afraid of the foundations shaking because they will and they must. What else is going on here? All of this is also connected to Juno, also in Scorpio. And Juno and Venus rising speak to the Divine Feminine in Scorpio, the goddess who is working 
with these things that we don't talk about. So what are you not talking about? What were the secrets you were told to keep from your ancestry, from your mother, from your father, from what happened to you as a child, from what you longed for, what you desired? Scorpio. Scorpio in this first house, Scorpio carrying the energy of Juno and Venus says you can talk about it now. And you can talk about it. If you, if you can't talk about it with anyone else, you can talk about it with the ancestors and with the goddess. So the ritual that I'm going to suggest for you, I, I've said, if you can set your alarm and wake up at 4.30 or wake up at 4 o'clock and be in meditation, step outside, look out a window, see if you can see Venus rising or the moon setting and connect with that powerful energy, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, light a candle, get your journal, light some sage or get a rattle, do something that connects you with ancestors and supports cord cutting uh, and simply giving back what belongs to them while may retaining the love and the power. And if for some reason it just does not work for you to get up before dawn, um, I encourage you to pay attention to your dreams as you go to sleep the night before on the full moon. Ask, ask to remember your dreams, ask to receive a dream. Ask for Venus to bring you a dream as she is rising. Often our, our dream time is in that last sleep cycle or two before we wake up. So there's a very good chance you can receive a dream and remember it. And if you do not remember your dream, still keep a journal by your bed and see if you can retain that first image, that first thought, that first feeling as you are waking up in the morning of the full moon. Um, be available to receive. I'm looking, there's birds flying in the trees. I've cleaned up and rearranged my office. Um, and it feels so much better. So I am, um, I will be drumming and offering prayers on your behalf during this full moon cycle. I will be with Priestess Paths or Star Hive Sisters. I will be with my land. I will be with Venus. I'm going to set an alarm just in case. She's been waking me up, but you never know. Um, I want to be with her on Monday morning and with the moon. So I will have you with me and all of you. So tune in, tune in. This is a potent full moon, a potent eclipse in this dark time of the year, the time when we go and sit with the dark goddess. Um, don't fight it, surrender. Many blessings to you at this full moon time. And I look forward to being with you uh, sometime on Monday. Uh, I'll be live again on Monday. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.